and take a look at the very first zone that we are going to be seeing in this expansion. The Waking Shores, which also, I believe, uh, is where our first raid perhaps is contained. Hmm. Yeah, because it's like this whole fiery area. Gotta say, like, you, you'll see more as I go on here, but the art team are so fucking on fire this time around. Oh, hey, uh, Killiki Love, thank you for the uh, the five bucks super. It said, what are the odds they spend the entire expansion rebalancing the talent trees? All right, so here's the deal. Um, the hope... <laughs> the hope, at least, is that that happens during Alpha and Beta, because it basically seems like Blizzard have really decided to not put in a crazy amount of, like you know, class overhauls, class revamps, like really big changes. Instead, they said that they are more focused on iteration. So that's the big hope. I mean, they put those mage talents out. They probably were aware that a lot of the mages would be kind of pissed off about it. You know, they, they maybe don't think it's all great, but I think they've clearly done that for feedback. Uh, it's just that thing. Blizzard, sometimes, you know, they do actually have this funny habit it's weird. They all they run a true alpha whenever Blizzard does an alpha test or a beta test. Um, the only thing that they haven't done is actually implement changes as if it was a true alpha. But I think now there's actually quite a lot of hope, dare I even say expectation, uh, within the community that Blizzard are going to actually implement changes. I, th I think there's... I think that vibe is, is honestly really there. I'm just going to fix up my bars and we can take a look. Uh, from what I hear, there's actually uh, a few pretty cool characters returning in this zone. Uh, which ties into something that I have wanted the WoW team to do for, uh, for really quite some time now. Okay. Now, dragon riding. Because technically, I don't... Oh, yeah. Maybe it would be worth having my main cooldown. I think that might be handy. Uh, so I'll get that. Disintegrate. You should be there. Uh, tail swipe. Okay, I'll just get some of these things set up. This is a really cool one, Landslide. It roots everyone, but there's a talent that makes the root uh, withstand like 200% more damage. So, man, you just feel super powerful with that ability. It's really nice. So, uh, Disintegrate, uh, Pyre, Charge Blast. We got Wing Buffet. That's just a, a little knockback that I have on a 45 second uh, cooldown, which, I mean, that's pretty sweet. And if you want to see something crazy, right? Because uh, I might as well cover these for those of you who have, who have missed them. This is Glide. So I can use this in combat. Uh, excuse me. Oh, that's Glide. Hang on. No, it's Hover that I want. Hover is such a crazy movement cooldown. It's kind of insane, right? Get a load of this shit. So... You know, I zoom forward, and then for all of this time while I'm flapping about the place, I can cast while moving. And you can get two charges of that. It's so bonkers. And there's, there's other things you can do um, as well to be able to use that even more. Uh, yeah, I'm like basically set up. I don't think everything's done, but I don't think it will really particularly matter uh, for this content. Okay, so we're in the new zone, the Waking Shores. I'm not exactly sure what the direct narrative lead-in is. There will, of course, be, uh, you know, like a whole bunch of cinematics and shit. Let's just see if the new... If the new uh, dragons are available to me. Because they were in my bars earlier, but I've noticed, yeah, Blizzard have actually removed them from my bars. So we're going to work out how they actually introduce us uh, to the dragon riding feature. It does, of course, mean I'm grounded for now. So, Thalen Dark Anvil, you'll remember him. There's a little bit at the start of this where you kind of gather a bunch of characters around to, like, set up this whole expedition. Uh, Thalen, he was there in Warlords of Draenor during its intro uh, sort of situation, right? You and him go in the big cannon, you get all the shit done. So what's going on then? Don't mistake the scholarly uh, pursuits as timidness. We're not recluse to studying books. We're adventurers hunting down uh, knowledge in every corner of Azeroth. I think that's the vibe we want. So, there's danger. We've got to gotta go rescue some people. Right. 15 primal proto-whelp scales. What could the story possibly be behind these? Well, the scales appear to be naturally flame-resistant, stronger than steel, and don't lose flexibility. Incredible. These artisans are clamoring to get their hands on some, so go get some. All right. 
fair play. That's a funny little thing, you know, because there's a, a thing goes on in some of the new FF uh, narrative content where there's talk about, you know, the cool properties of these dragon scales. And it's like in WoW, you know, you just go, oh, go, go collect 15 scales. And most people think, oh, 15 bear arses. But to what Matt was talking about earlier on in one of our, um, uh, or like our live shows, it's like, yeah, we got to go get 15 scales. There's actually a little bit of lore behind those skills, and maybe, you know, the, your kind of view of the world is kind of built out if you actually read all those little things. Alright, so this is um, Azrathel. Basically, there's like five different groups of Drakthir, and uh, one joins the Alliance, one joins the Horde. I think one gets pretty much eliminated, one decides to stay in their starting zone to help people out, and the other one ends up joining the enemy. So, yeah, basically... Time to go kill some primalists is our quest from him. And eventually, you know, we'll we'll get to see some some dragon riding soon, which will be neat. So yeah, just a few little gnome characters. Just want to see if there's anyone who kind of appears here. John Steele the third. Very good. That's enough gathering for me today. See, I've heard, right, that the characters from Exile's Reach are actually here, which I think is nice. Oh hey! I've seen things we, that would uh, we scare got ourselves you. Here's another thing, too. So, Blizzard have made it so that the Drakthir in their non-visage form, mine's kind of like, I've themed them like the infinite dragons, uh, they can now ride mounts, not in their visage. But it certainly has meant, because, like, the Drakthir are so tall. This is a human, uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's this, this human woman. Like, where, where's her head go to? Like, maybe the bottom of my character's ribcage. Like, these guys are so tall. So the scaling when they actually mount up is... Uh, it is some really, really thick stuff. Anyhow, one of the cool things that you can do with this spec is just, like, crazy-ass AoE shit, right? So I can go, you know, bam, target this guy, do a big eternity surge, and never mind! Never mind, the NPC does it for you. Fine, fine. I didn't need those cooldowns anyway. Ah, need to turn auto-loot on. Doing that, easy. Options, search, auto-loot. And it's done. So much quicker than poking around a menu. So the, the new UI right now honestly looks pretty disgusting and not that nice to use, but that new functionality is uh, is just really awesome. I wonder if these guys can come out there. I'll, I'll really, I'll have to go see what it's... How is this really like? I'll have to see what the new numbers are like. Uh, but yeah, anyway, the search function, I think that is pretty damn great. Okay, so let's see what a fully charged up eternity search does. In-game is loud, cool. Well, they got deleted. Normally about 30% does it, so let me know if that, uh, after it's been turned down to 30, does the trick. <laughs> oh dear, yeah, sorry, it just is the way that it is. Uh, we're getting there with a whole bunch, uh, setup-wise. So that's better, um, I think I can turn my mic up a little bit. Just a tiny smidge. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to peek it and then you guys get crunchy, Michael. Oh, yeah, here's a really cool one. Tip the scales. Uh, basically, I hit this and then, you know, boom, you insta-cast to its full level of power. So that's another, uh, that's a fun little one. Yep, targeting was not my friend there. So, yeah, anyway, new zone. Uh, just got some dudes to kill. Pretty standard content to be honest with you. Are the mobs skinnable? Uh, I assume so. What's this? It says pra- Oh, wait, no, that's just the quest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are skinnable mobs. What's the screaming sound in the background? I think there's just dragonish noises going on around the place. Anyway, so these are the primal, uh, primal elementalists. TLDR with these guys that I'm fighting is they think the titans are a bunch of dickheads. Or something along those lines. I mean, I'm sure there's uh, perhaps more to it than that. But they basically think the Titans are a bunch of dicks. So, uh, yeah, they're, you know, going against Alex Straza and all the all the crowd that we know. I think, uh, for me, what the big question, though, is, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of doing this very uh, Mists of Pandaria feeling, you know, exploration expansion. But I'm very curious as to how Blizzard are going to actually you know, work that into some sort of big narrative. 
This is quite cool with charged shots. Uh, it can basically reset its own cooldown when you use it with one of the talents that I've got. So assuming you've got enough essence, you can just pump out like, I don't know, just two really big blasts. So it's it ends up being kind of fun. The only odd thing is like disintegrate, to be honest. It feels a bit weak. Again, you know, it's, it's what I said in one of my videos uh, a while ago. All of the bits are brilliant so far on Evoker, and they're really fun, but I'm just not quite sure how they'll all, uh, you know, click together. Well, that's her rescued. Now I'm stuck in here. Oh, yeah, so these, right? These Lava Snails? You can ride these. They're available as a, as a mount. Is this a UI add-on? Nope, this is not. This is the new default UI-ish. Uh, all of these elements are eventually going to be usable. These nameplates, uh, Blizzard, we know they've redesigned them based on the reveal for this expansion, but the redesign just doesn't seem to be implemented yet. So, kind of a shame. The redesign, I think, looks really good for those. Is there archaeology? I don't think so. Uh, they said it's, like, on their list of things to do, and if archaeology does come back, it's going to come back in a different form to, uh, you know, to how we've seen it. I think just about everyone agrees archaeology has been quite underbaked and uh, yeah, it doesn't really live up to its promise. So I would rather Blizzard have the, the time to actually, you know, instead of just implementing a bunch of archaeology that they just think is kind of, you know, a bit old and shitty, I would rather they feel okay actually waiting, not putting archaeology in, but when it does come back in, they actually do it justice. That's certainly what I would want. Um, now, there is some cool speculation there. There's a character called Rafam, I believe. A character called Rafam that comes from Hearthstone, who's this, like, uh, kind of evil uh, archaeologist. And it seems like some of that Hearthstone stuff is actually going to make it uh, into the game, which I think is very neat. Because uh, Hearthstone, essentially, if you're not aware, Hearthstone has acted like a uh, this like crazy creative space within the Warcraft setting for the for the developers. That was the wrong ability to use. Uh, yeah, it's this like creative space where they can just do crazy shit. So I don't think anything in Hearthstone is canon at all. Of course, maybe some of the short stories in the Book of uh, Mercenaries uh, could be because they're like a little bit less impactful to the setting. Um, but generally, it's like stuff that really has felt Warcraft, like slightly more goofy, but honestly, it felt more Warcrafty to me, a lot of the Hearthstone stuff, than Shadowlands did. And they've developed some cool characters, you know, like Reno Jackson, the, or, yeah, Reno whatever, uh, Rafam, stuff like that. Uh, and they're all, you know, the uh, League of Explorers, right? So there is a thought that with Rafam, I think there's been references to him and other members uh, of that group being found in the game files for this expansion. So, if that is the case, maybe they could use, uh, you know, Reno and all of those guys who have been established and fleshed out in Hearthstone. Maybe they could bring them over here. Uh, do you think they'll do something with Andrastaz? Drake of the Secret Cave of Ankaraj. Also, you can call me Crow. Ah, cool, cool. Uh, I will have to put a pen in that one and, and take a look. I actually don't know a great deal about that character. Hmm. Yes, I'll have to do that. Also, Onus, thank you for the uh, the 10 bucks super. All right, we're going to meet Rathian. Will he teach us dragon riding? I really hope he does. Right, so there's like some sort of embassy situation that we've got to improve here. Let's see. Any characters here? All right, so this is, I mean, here, hey, Alliance and Horde, and they're green. Right? They are, they are green to me. They are not, uh, you know, yellow. We're very much friends. There you go. I can just talk to a member of the Horde. So I suppose we're seeing this stuff kind of pretty well reflected. Um, and hey, this makes sense, given all that Blizzard have been setting up. And I guess that's it. The Dragon Scale Expedition is between both, uh, both of the factions. And I suppose there is the option to still, you know, do the PvP if you want with War Mode. But very much, that's uh, no longer the default. And Ryan Pass dropped a super, said Rafam is the one who wants to resurrect Galakrond and Hearthstone. That's what's really interesting. And at the end of the, uh, the Descent of Dragons, uh, which I think, uh, expansion, I think that was 2020's Hearthstone content. Um, yeah, he did. 
He did, so obviously that's not canon, but we could perhaps imagine he wants to do the same thing, or maybe do a different thing for the same motivations. So I'm really excited about Rafam, and uh, not to give you too much of a spoiler, but we got a video. We got a video uh, on the way. Oh, hey, I recognize her. So that is Garrick from Axel's Reach. Yep, yeah, so yeah. Of course, there's the two of them. So the characters from Exiles Reach are actually being worked into the game. I think that's really nice. In the same way that seeing Sibelian return, the Black Dragon Sibelian from the Burning Crusade, it's just really satisfying when WoW is actually, you know, not just relying on the same few characters all the time, and they're actually establishing new characters and actually following through. 